What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Kari, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. Now, today we're taking a look at one of the most controversial sneakers I've probably ever put up on this channel. You've seen it in the news, you see it in the title. Without further ado, let's get to the packaging. Let's talk about the shoe. We have seen a lot of really interesting stories behind a lot of interesting sneakers, be they custom or be they actual releases from the brands, but this one here, might take the cake as far as most controversial sneaker, at least of 2019 and in recent years on top of that. All right, now today we're talking about, of course, the Jesus shoes, one of the biggest topics of 2019 in sneakers so far. Before we take a look at them though, as we look at the packaging, let's talk a little bit about who Mischief is and the person behind the brand. Now, if you don't know, Mischief is a Brooklyn-based products company, I guess I'll call it, because not only do they make shoes like this, but the company as a whole is more so focused on really breaking through barriers, tearing down walls, and really challenging the status quo when it comes to a lot of things in pop culture. Their website, which is mischief.xyz, actually has a list of different things that they have coming up next, some a lot more controversial than others. For instance, they set up a website on Seamless that allows you to place a food order, but then funnels the money into political donations for certain Democratic candidates, things like that. It's, it's very off-center, it's very weird and abstract, and of course, keeping in line with the brand, these shoes are very different and very abstract as well. Now, the more interesting part about Mischief is that their official Twitter page literally says, please do not follow us. So it has zero followers and it follows zero people. However, there is a telephone number that you can text to sign up for a drop list and 24 hours before a drop goes live on their website, you'll be notified about it. That's actually how I got notified about these. But I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, Mischief is also run by a gentleman named Gabriel Whaley, Gabriel Wally. Now, he has his own Twitter page that links Mischief and everything like that. So I'm guessing that is really the CEO of the company. I guess he's the brains behind this weird abstract company. And you have Mischief right here on the top of the box here. So. Starting off on the top of the box, you have a picture of the angel here. You have walk on water. Then you have mischief in collaboration with INRI. Now, if you guys don't know what INRI is, that actually stands for Jesus Nazarenus Rex Iudeirum. I think I said that right, but it's a Latin phrase that actually was the sign that was posted by Pontius Pilate above Jesus as he hung on the cross, INRI. We'll get into that a little bit later, but that really sets the tone for what we're about to get into with this shoe. Now, these actually, even though they're custom, they have really good packaging, like I mentioned, and they even come with a little tag on the side here. It says Jesus shoe, size nine, says everything about the shoe, that it's an Air Max 97, and says what actually comes into the shoe as well. 60 cc's of holy water, wool, things of that nature. We'll take a look at all of that in just a moment. Now, when you open the box here, it's a magnetic box. So it actually comes, snaps back like that. But when you flip open the tab here, the first thing that you see is this Bible verse. It's Matthew 14, 25, which says, and in the fourth match of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. So again, keeping with the theme of walking on water, that tells you what we're in store for. Now, when you open up the box completely, you see a very interesting graphic here that looks like two keys almost. That actually has a cross inside of the key. You also see the mischief with the INRI. And then right above that, it looks kind of like a Pope's hat right there. It looks, that, that big white hat there looks like a Pope's hat with the cross on top of it. So again, all setting the theme for the sneaker. First thing that you get inside of the box is this card here. The card says walk on water, has a really nice photo here of a person kneeling, looks like they're kneeling to pray with the Jesus shoes on his feet. Now on the back of the card, this is really interesting here. Not only does it give a little more information about the shoe, but more importantly, it actually has detailed instructions on how to destroy the shoe if you wanna throw the shoe away. Of course, because of the whole water and the holy components of the sneaker, they're saying that you can't just dispose of it like a normal sneaker. You actually need to puncture the water bubble in the shoe, drain out the holy water, maybe save it somewhere, and then dispose of the shoe after that. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Nike Air Max 97 by Mischief, aka the Jesus Shoes. These, um, 
He's got a lot going on. Now, obviously this sneaker has a heavy, heavy Catholic influence on the shoe. And that's a little bit of what we're here to talk about today. Is this sneaker actually worth the two to $3,000 that the shoe has been selling for on the market? I mean, is the sneaker even worth the $1,428 that they cost retail price? That's my question to you guys today as we take a little closer look at the shoe. So as we look at it, I want you guys to keep those prices in mind and let me know if you think it's actually worth it. Now starting with the upper of the shoe nothing has really changed about the upper of the shoe it is a triple white with 3m nike air max 97 really really nice sneaker honestly outside of all of the new components for the customization just a really clean looking shoe really nice looking shoe again i'm sure they chose all white because it looked kind of angelic it looked very pure it looked like i guess if jesus wore sneakers it might be a sneaker that jesus would wear now if you notice down here in the mud guard of the shoe on the lateral side it has Matthew 14, 25 in black yet again. That's the same verse that we looked at, which of course talks about Jesus walking on water. Now, these letters aren't actually embossed on. It actually looks like they're just stuck on or adhered on here. So it concerns me because if you actually do wear this shoe, it looks like it might actually come off in time. So that leads me to believe that this shoe may not be really designed for use, which honestly, I wouldn't really wear them anyway. But if you do decide to wear them, if you get your hands on them, I'd be careful of that because this may actually end up coming off. All right, obviously the big draw about this sneaker, as you can see, is the water that is inside of the midsole of the shoe, inside of the airbags here. Now again, an Air Max 97 has a pretty much full length airbag here, and they somehow have injected both airbags of this sneaker with 60 cc's of water that was directly sourced from the River Jordan. It's holy water. Now, a big question is how in the world did they even get the water inside of the airbag and honestly, I've been looking at this shoe back and forth and I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how they were able to get the water inside of the shoe and get the water to stay inside of the shoe. I honestly don't know. One thing I did notice is that this here is a little soft to the touch. So I really don't try to bother it too much because it feels like it's actually softer than normal. So I'm guessing they had to open up the airbag some kind of a way to get the water in there. But it also added weight to the shoe that wasn't intended to be there as well. So the shoe actually feels pretty heavy with that water in the bottom of it. Now, also an interesting thing to note is that the water was dyed. So the water that's from the River Jordan probably is more clear than this. Apparently they dyed this water to make it look a lot more blue for the shoe. Diving a little deeper into the shoe, on the laces of both the left and right shoe, you get this steel crucifix and it's real steel. It actually is pretty heavy here and I guess they use it kind of as a charm on the shoe, but it's actually a silver cross with Jesus' body in gold as the crucifix right here on the laces. Now, on the back of that crucifix, you also have the St. Benedict medal. If you guys don't know exactly, that's a photo of St. Benedict from Nursia. It's a very popular Roman Catholic symbol. Basically, it's called the Devil Chasing Medal, or it's a medal that's supposed to provide protection against bad spirits. So, having the crucifix on one side, having the St. Benedict on the other side. Apparently this sneaker is very blessed and even was blessed by a priest individually before the sneakers were sent out to their new owners. So maybe I feel blessed. But that price though. Now right above the tongue on the tag of the sneaker here you see a little red dot here. That is to represent the blood of Jesus. A drop of the blood of Jesus from when he was on the cross. On the heel of the right shoe you'll also notice that the INRI is also on the back of this shoe going down the heel. Now you can actually actually see the Air Max 97 and the white embossed letters underneath that. So it's not like this is a completely different heel tab. Again, it just looks like they kind of adhered the letters over the Air Max 97 branding. On the left shoe, everything is exactly the same, except here on the heel I wanted to show you guys, it also says mischief on the back of the heel. So instead of INRI, it says mischief. And on the heel of the insole, you get the mischief and INRI tagging. Now, there's also a really dope detail about the shoe. As I mentioned before, let's take a look at that one real quick. Boom. And there it is. Again, the 3M that goes all the way around the sneaker here on the Air Max 97. So you get the really nice water there along with the 3M material. Really, really nice touch on the shoe. Now, last but not least, you guys can't smell this, but there is a distinct, almost a spicy smell that comes from the shoes. It's a nice smell actually, but apparently it's frankincense. Apparently both of the sneakers were actually doused in frankincense, had frankincense sprayed in them. 
You guys know what frankincense is. Again, it's like a spice almost. It's a very fragrant substance that was given to Jesus when he was born in the manger. But that being said, that's pretty much it when it comes to the Jesus shoes. Now, again, $1,428 was the retail price. That's the price that got paid on these sneakers. You guys may be wondering how in the world did I get them? Well, the interesting thing about the release is that a couple of people got the pairs early. Seth Fowler for one, Lou from Unbox Therapy for another person here. But for those of us who actually had to pay for these sneakers, what happened was that there was a really, really small drop that happened originally for the shoe. We missed out on the drop. However, there was another drop that happened once I signed up for the phone list I told you guys about. They text everybody that was on that phone list with a 24 hour heads up saying that the shoes are gonna be restocking tomorrow because it was three days after the initial drop. And of course, Jesus rose from the grave three days after he died. So to commemorate that, they made a few more pairs of these and they came out with a very, very small, very, very limited restock of the shoe that sold out extremely quickly, even at $1,400 per pair. Now, again, you'll see prices of the shoe. They've gone down a bit. They were up around $3,000. They've come down around the $2,000 to $2,500 range, depending on how much you can find the shoe for. But again, is the sneaker worth that much money? And my short answer is yes, they are worth that much money if you're willing to pay that for them, if the shoe means that much to you. If you're a devout Catholic, which I'm not a devout Catholic, but if you were and the symbolism means so much to you and the shoe means a lot to you, if you're a big fan of mischief as a whole and the work that Gabriel does, maybe that means a lot to you. However, if you're somebody, say you're an atheist for that matter, and you don't even believe in God, these probably wouldn't be worth that much to you because the symbolism is really what sells the shoe. That's what sells the value of the shoe and the emotional tie that you have with the symbolism in the shoe. But isn't that really how sneakers works as a whole? It really has everything to do with how tied we are to the sneaker emotionally that really drives what we're willing to pay for it. And at the end of the day, every sneaker out here is only worth what people are willing to pay for. So if nobody was willing to pay $1,400 for the shoe, no, the sneaker theoretically wouldn't be worth that much. But if people are willing to pay up to $3,000 for the shoe, yeah, that's exactly what it's worth. And you see that with everything from Off-White to Travis Scott sneakers and on and on and on. Everything is only worth what people are willing to pay for it. So it's a subjective conversation to have because you can't really put a price on a couple of shoes that have some holy water in them with some crucifixes on it if you look at it that way. However, there are other people that are gonna be putting these up in a case. They're gonna be putting these on ice. They'll never wear them. Now, Drake wore a pair of the shoes and Drake actually walked on water. And apparently that's the idea of the shoe is that they want you to wear them so that you can feel like you're walking on water. But to me, I feel like there might be a little bit of a moral dilemma with the whole idea of me walking on water as if I am Jesus. I just don't really know if I can get down with that ideology. So I think these would more so be held up in a case or something kind of as a collector's item or as a piece. These might even be something that would go into a museum of some sort, you know, just to put on display along with maybe some other things centering around Catholicism or some of the other symbols that are here. I say all that to say that it is a really intriguing sneaker, turned a lot of heads, got a lot of press. It really has been a hot trending topic for quite some time now. It's incredible to have these actually in hand when you see the craftsmanship that went into it. It really is a good looking sneaker. It has, again, a lot of symbolism behind it. So I think it could be worth it to a lot of people, but me personally, I don't know if I'd pay $3,000 for them. But enough of me talking now. It's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the Jesus shoes. Is this one that you were by some way able to pick up? Were you able to pick them up at the retail price or did you have to get them at the higher price, two to $3,000? Sound off down below and let me know if you got them or if you want them or if you think that the shoe is sacrilegious or blasphemous or just wrong altogether. Sound up down below. Let me know what you think about these. Of course, where you're down in the comments, make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you, I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I wanna thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Nike Air Max 97 by Mischief, AKA the Jesus Shoes. And until next time, I'm out.